Juve are being investigated for some alleged irregularities and shady financial practices, as confirmed by the club itself with their November 27th, 2021 official club statement. As of Monday, the 29th, potential punishments have been discussed, including relegation to Serie B and the stripping of their last Scudetto from 2020. Hey, I'm Adrian and welcome to Rabona TV, and today we'll go through what's going on in the news with Juve, off of the pitch. That is, at least for this one. This should be a quick video as it's an ongoing investigation. We don't have all of the information yet, but I'll just tell you what we know so far. And right off the bat, guys, I just want to say that there are allegedly investigations going into the same sort of things we'll go over in this video happening at other Serie A clubs. According to Corriere dello Sport, Napoli, Roma, Atalanta, Genoa, and Sampdoria are also being investigated for their inflated transfer values, mostly surrounding youth players. However, given Juventus are formally being investigated and they have acknowledged this with an official club statement, this video will mostly surround Juventus and their investigation as that's where most of the info available and surrounding a certain club lays. All right, let's get started. Sources are in the description if you want to check this out for yourself. Back in September, Juve's financial report for the year noted that they were under investigation by CONSOB, the regulators of the Italian market, who were looking into Juve's financials with support from Covisoc, which is a commission set up by the Italian Football Federation, which keeps track of the finances of Italian clubs. One month later, in October of 2021, Kovisak highlighted 62 deals done by Italian clubs between 2019 and 2021 that they deemed suspicious. Of those 62, 42 of them involved Juve. On top of that, as reported by the Guardian article I've linked below, some quote, intercepted phone calls involving members of the club's senior management opened further avenues of inquiry for the public prosecutor. So, what was Juve's response to all of this? Juve left it short and sweet, saying that they basically acknowledge the investigation and they are going to comply with authorities. Here's a portion of what they said, and this is a little bit wordy, but we'll try to clear things up after. Juventus Football Club SPA, Juventus or the company henceforth, acknowledges that the public prosecutor's office of the Court of Turin has started investigations against the company and some of its current officers, Andrea Agnelli, Pavel Nedved, and Stefano Serrato and former officers concerning item revenues from players' registration rights of the financial statements as of and for the years ended June 30th, 2019, 2020, and 2021 for offenses under Article 2622 of the Italian Civil Code, false accounting reporting by listed companies, and Article 8 of Legislative Decree Number 74 of 2000, issuance of invoices or other documents for non-existent transactions. That's very wordy. That's part of it. And in the next paragraph, they just spoke about the ongoing going investigation and how they quote, will clarify any aspect of interest to it as it believes to have acted in compliance with the laws and regulations governing the preparation of financial reports in accordance with accounting principles and in line with the international practice in the football industry and market conditions. That's basically just saying that they thought that they were doing things fine and within the current climate of the football market. And some other keywords from the prior paragraph tell you all you need to know as far as what they are being investigated for. False accounting reporting by listed companies and issuance of invoices or other documents for non-existent transactions, AKA fudging the numbers, cooking the books a little bit. The transfer market has become a bit of a mess thanks to overinflated prices, mysterious fees flying in all sorts of directions, and of course, the old player plus cash deal. That last part is what Juve and other clubs, remember, are getting investigated for, especially when it comes to youth players. The big word that you'll see constantly associated with this case going forward will be plus valenze, or in English, capital gains, as there have been some strange tactics used by clubs to ensure that they have capital gains on their balance sheets via some interesting methods and even more interesting player valuations. The deals in question typically involve the overinflating of players' values. Let's take the Arthur and Pjanic deal in particular, which is one of the deals highlighted as problematic, as you can see here. And there's a lot of room to sort of fudge the numbers and make up whatever value you want for a player. For Pjanic and Arthur, instead of a swap deal plus a normal amount, let's say, you know, people value Pjanic and Arthur at a difference of 10 million euros, that would make sense. Player plus 10 million, nothing crazy going on there. That's sort of what they did. 
but to a crazy degree with crazy valuations, like, you know, 60 heading to one club and 72 to the other. Another deal that is catching suspicion is that of Cancelo to City in exchange for Danilo. According to Football Italia, let's take a look at what they wrote. The exchange deals are reportedly reaching a value of 90 million euro for the Bianconieri, but only just over 3 million euro changed hands when former director Fabio Paratici, who is currently plying his trade at Tottenham Hotspur in the Premier League, ran the transfer operations at Continassa. Juventus made a similar operation with Genoa when Nicolo Rovella was valued at 18 million euro when joining the Bianconeri, with Manolo Portanova and Elia Petrelli used as makeweight to match the total amount of the deal with the Griffone. Both Rovella and Marquez's contracts were set to expire six months before they signed for Juventus. So yeah, 90 million moved according to the records, but only 3 million actually changed hand. Another one of the deals that is being investigated is what brought Victor Osimen from Lille to Napoli. The structure of that deal was to pay around 70 million euro to Lille, plus send Orestes Carznesis, Claudio Manzi, Ciro Palmieri, and Luigi Lugiori to Lille with a value of about 20 million. Palmieri and Ligiori have left Lille already and currently play for clubs in Serie D, the fourth division of Italian football. Market value of those players? I mean, even adding up the four different values wouldn't equal 20 million. Marco Donzelli, the president of Codicons, which is the Association for the Protection of Consumer Rights in Italy, says that Juve could be relegated to Serie B and stripped of the titles they won during the period of 2019 to 2021 if they are proven guilty of accounting fraud. Speaking to TMW, Donzelli said, quote, the accusatory system is very serious and throws a sinister light on the last football championships. Also, because there has been a real Juventus dominance in recent years, which ended in the past year. If Juventus were to have illegitimately gained an advantage over rival clubs with operations of this type, then the regularity of the last football championships would fail. And as a consequence, the Federation and the Authority for Market Competition will have to intervene and sanction those responsible. Beyond individual responsibilities, the club will not be exempt from punishment. For this reason, and to protect thousands of fans, we will present a complaint to the Antitrust and the Federal Prosecutor's Office asking for the relegation to Serie B for Juventus and the revocation of the last league titles won in the shadow of these potentially illegal operations. That's a hefty fine that could come their way, but from what I've read, it will be difficult to prove beyond reasonable doubt that Juventus had gained a sporting advantage over their rivals, on top of the massive task of proving that Juve had done some fishy accounting work. Well, the short answer to this is we wait. We wait and see what happens as both sides have you know, signaled their intentions to investigate and have made their statements, and now we let the process happen. Plenty of Juve personnel, both current and former, are being questioned or will be questioned in the future about some of these mysterious transfers that have passed through Juve's books. Maurizio Arrivabene, the current CEO of Juve, was questioned recently. And the likes of Giovanni Manna and Paolo Morganti will also be questioned, it is believed, as they deal with plenty of youth players at Juve. And plenty of these allegedly suspicious transfers involve youth players. In fact, it's become so serious that the chosen heir to the Agnelli family business, John Elkan, cousin of Andrea Agnelli, has flown in to oversee the situation, having the club's lawyers meet to fine-tune a defensive strategy, as Calcio Mercato put it. But yeah, that's where it stands. If Juve are found guilty of this, then the repercussions could be massive, just as they could be for the other clubs who could potentially be found guilty, of course, as well. My guess is that, you know, they'll get a slap on the wrist for malpractice or for negligence, and that will be that. But we'll see. Maybe this will blow up. Anyways, guys, that's it for this one. A quickie for today, the final day of November, by the way. I'll have more for you this week, some more podcast episodes coming out. But other than that, Thanks for taking the time to hang with me, and we'll see you later. Peace.